Welcome to the 2018 Havilene 100 race briefing. Welcome. I'm uh, Jamil Curry, uh, owner of Aeroviper Running. And I'm Jubilee Page. I'm the RD for this year's Havilene 100. And we've been doing something the last couple years. We've been doing a video briefing. And this year we thought we'd step it up one notch and do a live briefing. Yeah. So thank you guys for tuning in today. We are less than a week out from race day. We want to go over a few things for all of you. Now, if you missed this live briefing, you can catch it on Facebook all week up until the race. And we're also recording this for YouTube as well. And we're going to be posting that probably by Sunday night, Monday morning. Cool. So let's get going. Awesome. Um, just to start off, uh, the participant uh, guide for 2018 has already been posted. If you guys have not gone through that yet, please take time, take a look. There's a lot of great information about uh, the race, about the course, about uh, the expo, just kind of all things Havelina uh, is covered in this year's um, runner guide. So go ahead and you can pull that off of the main website um, and just take a look and read through it. It looks somewhat like this. It's very, very pretty. Um, just kind of a little bit of history about the um, Havelina 100. You want to give us a Yeah, the history? race itself. Some people think yeah. I created the race, but I did not. Uh, it was founded in 2003 by uh, Jerry K, Jerry Kilgariff, and she was a local race director here. They thought that it would be kind of a funny joke to uh, run loops out in the desert <laughs> on the Pemberton Trail. The Pemberton Trail is a pretty popular trail back then. People would be training on it, and uh, but when they thought about it more, it made a lot of sense. Logistically, it was easy to get aid to people, and uh, she's a bit crazy, so they always had the, the twist of the party atmosphere and something that we've been able to continue. Uh, we took over the race after five years, so in year six, we, we uh, organized it, uh, and now it's under Air Viper Running, and that was 2008 was the first year we organized it, so we're I think this is our 11th year now. Yeah. Pretty yeah, wild, 10 cool. years ago. Um, and then just uh, kind of backtracking, if you guys have questions um, while we're going through the race brief, please feel free to type them in the comment section below. Um, we will get to those and then we will also like open it up to live questions. So at the end of this race brief, we'll ask you guys for any questions that you might have about the event um, and we'll be able to answer those live. Um, we want to really quickly thank our sponsors this year. Uh, again, we have we're, we're privileged to have Hoka One One on board with us um, as a title sponsor for the entire event. Um, they'll have a huge presence out at uh, headquarters. Also, they'll be at um, Coyote Canyon or Coyote Coyote uh, Camp, camp <laughs> and um, and at the expo as well. So um, they are back, and then we also have Rabbit. Um, as a sponsor, they are actually our sponsor for our race shirts. These are amazing, beautiful race shirts this year. Um, Rabbit has been amazing in, in providing these to us, and they are printed, and the print is amazing. Uh, it's and they're probably, also co-branded with Hoka as well. Absolutely, yeah. Um, the attention so, to detail is awesome. I think it's you guys really, gonna really love these shirts. Probably one of the best shirts that I've, I've ever seen at a race. Um, we also have Goo, a huge nutritional sponsor. We'll be out at all of the aid stations. Um, you'll have Goo uh, packs and then also Goo brew at all the aid stations. Um, Squirrels Nut Butter, anti-chafe, all natural, local to Arizona um, from Flagstaff, Arizona. And uh, they are just, they, they will have probably a lube station like they did last year um, right there on the course for you guys. So in the case that you are having a rough time haha, uh, at your race, uh, check out Squirrels Nut Butter and they'll get you all chafe, like chafe saved. Um, Run Steep Get High. We have uh, Run Steep Get High and Mount Outhouse, uh, Mount Outpost out at uh, our store. Um, some amazing new product uh, if you guys are fans of Run Steep Get High. And uh, we have other local sponsors, things that we'll mention probably at the end of this race brief. Um, we're just gonna kind of go through a little bit of what to expect for your race week, um, kind of starting with the expo and then race day. Uh, again, if you guys have any questions as we go through this, please type them in the comment box and we'll get to them at the end. So starting with Friday, we have the Runner Expo um, this coming Friday, starting from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, that is where runners come to La Puesta del Sol out at McDowell Mountain um, Adventures, and they can pick up their bibs. 
their cool swag bag, uh, all of like their necessities. We'll have I Run uh, doing a store out there. We'll have Hoka out there doing uh, fittings and things like that. Um, we've got uh, a full store for like new Havelina merch and Era Vipa and Run Steep Get High. Um, and then we also have vendors like Freak Brothers Pizza will be out there for lunch from 11 to 4. And uh, Hoppy Havelina is back. So we have our co-branded brew uh, with Huss Brewing um, this year again. And they will be out there um, at the expo and at headquarters uh, on Friday uh, in a beer garden. Yeah, I already tried this year's edition. It's pretty good. It's the it second, second year collaboration yeah. with them. And yeah, they changed it up slightly from last year. It's pretty good. And uh, watch out. It's about 7%. So gets you pretty hoppy. Hoppy, hoppy, Pretty times. happy, hoppy, right joppy. <laughs> um, I want to give you guys a little bit of a sneak peek of our goodies. Um, this is our shirt for this year. Um, we are also giving you an amazing cooler bag. Um, and uh, for those who have pre-ordered hoodies, uh, let me show you the hoodie. This is it right here. It's adorable. Um, and we have like sticker packs and a whole bunch of good stuff within your goodie bag this year. Um, the goodie bag itself is an actual cooler and it is an appropriate size for a drop bag. So in the case that you guys want to use this year's goodie bag as your drop bag, you're more than welcome to do that. Um, I also want to sneak peek uh, the Jackass goodie bag. So for those that don't know what Jackass Night Trail is, yeah. what is that? So Jackass Night Trail, uh, this race is a bit R-rated, um, and we wanted to kind of uh, pay tribute to the R-ratedness of uh, Havelina, and so this is the Jackass Night Trail. For those people who are not ready to jump up from 100 mile, uh, up to 100 mile and 100K, um, they have an option of experiencing Havelina with one or two loops their choice 31k 62k they start at night um, from 6 p.m. or 6 30 p.m. and uh, they basically get a party pack uh, to help them on their way um, I basically want people to experience like really kind of take in all of Havelina and every single aid station um, but especially at Jackass Junction there is a disco in the middle of the desert like none other and they will get there right on time um, to experience it so we have um, these flashy blinky light glasses uh, so I wear my shades at night and then we ha we are giving you a party cup this is a silly pint it cannot break uh, if you drop it in the desert or like whatever it's it's not gonna break um, so you can take that with you on your journey um, there are several libations offered at these aid stations. I don't know anything about it, but um, you can use that cup. There's also a glow-in-the-dark tattoo, um, sticker, and then glow bracelets as well. So everything and anything to kind of like wear and, and take on your journey. So. And bibs. And bibs we'll get to. Bibs and wristbands are next, actually. So here we go. Um, bibs for this year. We've got the 100 mile, 100K. This is what they look like. 100 mile. 100 mile, 100K. Um, they are double chipped on the back, so when you receive these, do not bend them, do not crinkle them. Um, you can bend around the bib if you want to fold. Um, just don't bend in the middle because they're very, very important. We double chip them to make sure that we capture your time. We'll have remote timing at every single aid station so we can kind of keep track of you at, um, as you go along with your race. But uh, for the most part, just make sure that you keep these in one piece. And if your crews or anyone else out there that wants to view how your race is going, if they're on site or elsewhere, yep. ultracast.tv, that is the URL to type in. So ultracast.tv. Again, we'll have uh, remote timing points at every single aid station this year. That's something new. Last year, we just had it at the main and at Jackass Junction. Mm -hmm. So they'll be at every single aid station this year. Um, the Jackass bibs look just like this. Um, you'll see that they have little uh, round bits on them. Uh, and those are these are acting like your passport to have a leaning experience. So as you go along at each and every aid station, you're going to find um, one volunteer with flashy blinky uh, suspenders and they were going to 
give you and stamp you um, a sticker that represents that aid station that you've been through. Um, so you go through and you collect all four um, to complete your trip around uh, Havelina. Um, this year we also have wristbands that go along with everybody's bibs. So in addition to getting your bib at Packet Pickup, uh, whenever you pick it up, either um, at the expo or at uh, race morning, you're going to receive a wristband. We will place this on you. This means that you are an active participant in our race this year. Uh, when you wear it, um, just make sure that it doesn't crinkle or tear off or anything like that. This is, uh, this is very important. Also has your bib number on it as well. It has your bib number on it. In the case that you drop from the race, we are asking that these be cut off of your wrist. So indicating that you are no longer a part of the race. If you drop, these will be removed um, and handed to our ham operators. Um, to let them know that you are no longer a part of the race. It's very, very important that in the case that you do drop, uh, we need proof of it. So instead of taking your bib, we're gonna take these instead. Okay. Um, also on Friday, we have Havelina uh, Headquarters Camp Check-In. Um, if you have made accommodations at one of the hotels, awesome. If you are checking in um, to our tent city, tent town at Havelina, um, you can do that on Friday. And there's also crew set up on Friday as well, starting at 7 a.m. Um, 7 a.m., you can go to the uh, headquarters um, right at McDowell Mountain Regional Park and they will um, give you your tent pass, your vehicle camping pass, your RV pass, whatever it is that you received. Um, every single runner will receive a runner park pass. Uh, in the past, we've printed these off for you. Uh, this year, it's a hang tag, very, very specific. You can pick these up at the uh, main gate at, Havali or at um, the McDowell Mountain Regional Park, or you can pick them up um, at the expo. Either way, it's one pass per runner. Um, and once you have that, then you can come and go as you need. Um, so go when you go to the entry gate, make sure that you give them your name and your bib number, and they will give you a green pass. Okay. Um, camp tags. If you are camping and you are bringing your own equipment, um, you're going to receive a little orange tag just like this uh, that you can zip tie to your tent. Um, there is a specific area just for people to camp and set up tents. Um, that is actually not including uh, the crew pop-up tent area. So we do not want people camping in tents um, in and around the course uh, where crew pop-ups are supposed to be. Those are specific to 10 by 10 pop-ups. Um, so tent camping is will be outlined for you. Um, if you rented a tent from us, uh, you will get one of these three tags uh, with large tent, small tent, large tent, one cot, whatever it is. Um, these will be attached to the tents and we will give you a little sticker and you go and first come, first serve, pick the tent. That it you has want. your name on it, it so will that have, reserves yeah. your specific tent. Right. Uh, vehicle camping, RV camping, same thing. You guys get hang tags. Um, there will be a specific spot for you guys to park as well. Um, as you come in, you'll be directed uh, by our staff and our crew. And then if you have rented a tent, you'll be directed to uh, our happy camper. His name is Mike, um, who will get you set up with your rentals. Um, they as, can drop their stuff off. Yeah, as you come in, we do prefer you to come in and drop your stuff off and then go and park in our competitive lot. That's where we have all of our parking. It just helps alleviate um, and erase kind of traffic jams within the main area. So we'll ask that you come in, drop your stuff off, go park, and then come back and set up as you need. Um, on Friday night at the main headquarters, there will be a beer garden and Freak Brothers Pizza for you guys. Uh, our charity beer garden, again this year, is Southwest um, uh, Conservation Center, uh, Southwest Wildlife Conservation Center. They are amazing. They do amazing things for animals and rehab and rehabilitation um, for uh, animals that have been hurt or displaced or um, they come into them as pets and they have a sanctuary and then they also, they do a lot of rehab and kind of like re-entry into the wild. So. Um, really great uh, local charity. Um, so all of those 
hoppy purchases. Yeah, we'll we will have them. the hoppy javelina on site yeah. as well as some of other of Huss's beers. Yep. Cool. And then quiet hours will start at 8 p.m. on Friday at headquarters. Um, a little bit about race day. Um, just from the very beginning, uh, parking has always been uh, kind of a bottleneck in the morning. So our best advice is to arrive early. Um, if you guys have a chance to pick these up ahead of time, please do so. It will help kind of keep the flow as you're going. If you have those, just everyone can just, just keep going you, right on you in. Keep going you don't have in. to stop at the gate really. Um, yep. They'll just make sure they see that tag and you'll be waved right on through. Yep. Um, and then parking for all participants, all volunteers, all spectators, all crew is all in the competitive lot and it is across the street from our headquarters. So that means you're gonna park in the competitive lot, um, which is just a left right as you get into this, the park, and you're gonna walk across the street to headquarters. Um, there is absolutely no parking in headquarters. Once we shut that on race day, once we, we start race day, there are no cars that are allowed within headquarters. If you sneak in, if you come in, if we find your car parked, cars will be towed this year. Um, parking on the side of the road, Sometimes the competitive lot is full. If you are not able to find a spot, we do allow you to park on the side of the road um, next to competitive and headquarters, um, but we'll ask that you just be very respectful um, and park off enough to the side that it's not uh, interfering with traffic. Well, basically, and not in the desert either. So not there, in the desert, there's a little just, bit yeah. of a, there's a little bit of a um, kind of a shoulder so basically off the road but not in the desert and like last year we had a couple trucks that had their rear bumpers hanging over the white line we really need you to be off that road it's a safety issue right um this year we will have uh parking attendants this year helping yeah. to park as well yeah so they're yeah part of a valet company so keep an eye out for those guys and, and please just follow them they know how to efficiently park everyone yeah so if you guys can just Keep an eye out for them, follow their instructions. It'll go smooth and fast and uh, very efficient. Yeah. Um, and just to be clear, they're not valeting your car. Right, yes. <laughs> but they are a valet company just giving you some They're direction. just helping, they're helping to, yeah. to park the lot. Yeah. But they're not, we're not valeting cars. No. Not yet, anyways. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, there is no camping in the competitive lot. So if you've reserved camping, we ask that you uh, receive your setup and everything on Friday. Um, it, unless you have one of these passes that you're coming in with, um, but there is no camping, so no tents or anything like that in the parking lot in the competitive lot. Um, bid pickup on race morning is going to be held in the store. It'll be um, signed, but it's right next to the start finish line. Um, come in there, grab your bib uh, if you're not able to get it on Friday. Uh, we have a couple vendors on site, race morning. Um, they're there for you if you need. Uh, we have our main station open to runners. Um, so if you need to grab a quick snack, a banana, a, a, any kind of carb, whatever. Fill up your water bottle. Fill up your water bottle. You can do that at the main aid station. But we also have Gypsy Cup Coffee and Juice Town Jailhouse right there at the store next to the finish line. Um, so if you need, if coffee's not enough, you need a latte, you need, you know, your super happy mocha, I don't know what it is, uh, we'll have Gypsy Coffee And out we there also ask crews do not take from the aid station. Oh, they yeah. are, they will likely have coffee for runners in the morning there. Yep. But if you are a crew, we ask that you go over to Gypsy Cup or Jailhouse Juice. And they're going to be right next to where the Hoka Arch was last year, if you mm -hmm. guys attended, right near uh, that turn point. So yep. keep an eye out for them. Cool. Um, restrooms are located in multiple areas around headquarters. Um, and they are also located at every aid station uh, that we have out on course and at the road crossing. So. Um, so multiple chances. If you do use. need to use the desert out there, we ask um, do not leave any TP. toilet paper no. out there and also um, bury your business. Um, and please go off of the trail. Um, no one wants to see you right next to the course. And we ask you to, um, ideally, you should be digging a hole six inches deep. So yes. please respect that and leave no trace out on the course. There's a lot of rocks out there. Take a rock, dig a hole. It's the best use, I'm telling you. Um, showers also available to uh, runners. We have showers at the competitive track and at Pemberton Trail. Um, so once you're done with your race, if you need a shower. Um, I would recommend driving up to Pemberton. It'll probably be the least crowded. Yep. So it's about three miles up the park. It's where the race used to be held. 
Um, there's not a lot going on there, so if you go up there, you probably have the place all to yourself. Cool. Um, race start, race morning, right at 6 a.m. Uh, we have a couple new things this year. So our 100 mile will start at 6 a.m. and 6.10 a.m. Uh, Mountain Standard Time. Um, we have two separate starts for the 100 mile this year because we have a wave start. Do you want to explain our wave start? Yep, absolutely. So we noticed last year with 535 people starting the race, uh, everyone ran through the parking lot okay. It was nice and wide, but you hit a single track after about a quarter mile, yeah. and that bottlenecked pretty bad. Uh, where people were just basically standing in the lot, waiting Shuffling. to uh, try and get there. And I think the first few miles was a lot of walking. So we want to split, essentially try and split the field in half. So what we are saying is we are not pre-assigning waves. We're not checking anything. You decide what wave you want to run in. But if you think or your goal is to run sub 24 hours at the race, we ask you to start in wave one. And if you are planning on running over 24 hours, up to 30 hours, that you start in wave two. So um, if you're on the fence, you can kind of decide, but you might be at the end of the first wave. Maybe it'll be a little more weight, but the second wave, uh, if you're in the front of that wave, you're going to have pretty much a wide open trail for the first couple miles uh, until you catch up to the first wave. By the time the first group clears out of that lot, it's already going to be probably three to four minutes into the race. You guys are going to be lining up for wave two. so. I don't think it's going to be uh, that big of a deal to start in the second wave. And yeah. if anything, it's just going to give everyone a little more breathing room this year. Uh, just a quick note, everyone will have a full 30 hours to finish the race from the start of your wave. So if you start in wave one, just like every other year, you will have until 12 noon Sunday to finish. That's 30 hours from quote unquote gun time, the start of the race. You start at 6, 10 a.m you will have until 12, 10 p.m. on Sunday. Mm -hmm. So we're not taking anyone, any time away from anyone. We're not penalizing We're anything. also not giving more time to wave one. Correct. So even though you start at 6 a.m., you don't have until 12, 10 p.m. in wave one. Right. Hopefully that's clear and it should go smooth this year. Yep, same thing for the cutoffs. So in the case that uh, uh, you come through each aid station, they will be extended 10 minutes for the wave two participants. 100K start, still 7 a.m., and yep. there's just one wave. We have 250 people signed up for that one, so that should be fine having one wave this year. Yep. Uh, a little bit about your course marking. Uh, we mark our courses very specifically. Um, if you've ever run an Arab at the race, it's the same across the board. Um, we have orange ribbon with black polka dots. Polka dots are positive markers. Um, and then I say orange, of course, is the correct area or uh, way. So orange, of course, you're going the correct way. Um, and then every single one of these markers will also have a reflective tag um, hanging off the bottom of it. So in the case when you're running through the night, um, you'll be able to see these as well. Uh, Wrong way ribbon is uh, blue and white checkered. Uh, if you see this and you are headed in that direction, check yourself, turn around, you've gone the wrong way, go back. Orange, of course, is the correct way. Okay. Um, along the course, we also have laminated signs just to kind of point you in the right direction. These are also reflective, um, but big bright yellow signs in the case that we're uh, going to turn you, we're going to turn you obnoxiously and we're going to have you turn either right, left, or go straight, just to kind of uh, like make sure that you're going the right way. There's gonna way. be a lot of straight arrows when you're on the Pemberton Trail, but there are some yeah. critical turns, mostly near the Pemberton Trailhead lot. Uh, those will be very important that you do not miss them. And in the case that you come to that critical turn, we'll also have these signs, again, obnoxiously telling you, hey, what's up? If you see one of those, take your tilt your head up for just a couple just, seconds just a and a second. uh, make sure you're on the right path. Yep. And if you um, run into one of these, wrong way. turn around. Please. Don't go down those trails. They're Don't great trails, guarantee it, but not ones we want to use uh, this time around. Cool. Um, along the course, you will also see medical signs. Uh, this is know your ABCs. It's ABC all the way around. Um, you will see these signs with our medical number right down here at the bottom. If you guys are having any kind of issue on the trail or if you're seeing a runner who is in need of medical assistance or in help, uh, in need of help, make note of what sign you saw last and this will help uh, our medical staff find you quickly. Um, 
We know so exactly where those signs are. We know are. exactly where those signs are. We have pinpointed the mile mark exactly where those are. So we'll be able to assist you faster. Uh, we ask that you please do not call 911. It's not the fastest way to help you. Um, call this number and if uh, this number is also in um, your race manual and it is printed on the side of every bib. Do yourself a favor, plug those numbers into your cell phone uh, before the race begins and you'll have uh, that ready to go in the case that you need. And it really does help our medical team. They are um, a, real, a highly trained crew, paramedics, EMTs. They do have advanced life support mm -hmm. on site. They have IVs if you need them. And we really don't want to be a drain on the local 911 system. So they will screen every single emergency. And if we need to contact you know, the higher powers, if we need to get a helicopter out to you, we'll get it sheriff, to you. search and rescue, whatever it is, yeah. we will get it to you. But that is going to be the quickest way to to help uh, and to help everyone at the at the event. And those yeah. safety markers are approximately one mile apart. Yeah. Um, along the course, you will also have we have safety patrol out there. It's a couple volunteers. Um, they're out there uh, usually going in either direction. If you account one of them and you are out of water, you are bonking really, really hard. Um, you don't know if you can like make it to the next aid station. They are there. If you encounter these guys, um, they're held there to help you. Um, so uh, just kind of extra support and extra uh, medical out there for you guys um, just in case. Um, do you want to tell a little bit about our course description? Yeah, so what you guys are running approximately a 20 mile loop. The first loop is a little long and it's a little different. So that is one thing to keep in mind. The aid stations you're going to be hitting on course. There are three remotes in one main. Our main aid station is called Havelina Headquarters or JQ for short. Mm -hmm. The first aid station you'll be hitting is Coyote Camp. Uh, that one will have the large Hoka tent just so you can keep, keep them all straight. It's also, there's a few miles of rockier trail right near Coyote Camp. After that, you'll head on the far side of the course to Jackass Junction. That, of course, has our night disco. Uh, won't be open during the day, but uh, make, be sure to, uh, don't drop before night, because you really want to see that. Definitely. Uh, and then Rattlesnake Ranch, this is our surprise running club aid station. They are always uh, helpful and out there each and every year. Uh, so yeah, those are our, our main aid stations. and. You will also be running the course washing machine style. I think our race might even be the one to coin that term. I think there's a lot of them now, but essentially you're going back and forth. So yeah. uh, clockwise is your first lap, counterclockwise is your second, and so on and so forth. And that goes for all races, yes. including, including the night. Including the jackass So you Nitro. always start in the clockwise direction. Yep. When you come into the main area, you always need to cross the timing mat, but there is a short out and back through the parking lot. So the decision point for each loop is not at the start finish, it's a quarter mile out when you enter and exit the main headquarters parking lot. Right. So we'll have that clearly signed as well. There will be lap signs there. So try and keep straight what lap you're on. But if you at any point doubt it, just think which way did I come in? Go out back out that way. So you want to be retracing your steps every time you come in and out of uh, headquarters. Cool. Um, weather. Weather is always kind of uh, up and down at this race. Um, in the past couple of years, it's been very hot. It will probably be hot again this year. Um, right now, they're saying 87 degrees for yeah. a high. Uh, that could easily turn into 93 by race day. And out there, exposed with all the granite rock, the temperatures can even be hotter on the far side of the course. So yeah. please keep that in mind. Don't think this is going to be a cool year because it's showing in the 80s. Uh, many of you I know are coming from out of state. Please keep yourselves wet. We will have plenty of ice out there. We'll probably get to that here in a minute. Yeah, I mean, speaking of like running in the heat, do you have running tip, like running heat tips? The biggest, the biggest thing is your body sweats to cool itself. If you can apply water to yourself proactively, your body doesn't have to work as hard to produce that sweat to cool you. So if you can keep extra water in your bottles to keep your neck wet, keep your hair wet, keep your shirt wet, also carrying an ice bandana throughout the day, putting ice in your pack. It's just gonna help you to keep cool, especially if you're not used to these temperatures. Us here in Arizona, we're, we're here in 87, we're thinking that's gonna be a beautiful day because we've been dealing with triple digits uh, temperatures all summer. Yeah, so it feels amazing right But now. If, if you're from out of state and it's snowing on you, that's gonna be a shock to your system. So yeah. do yourself a favor um, and, and keep yourself wet. Totally. Um, and then uh, just another thing with uh, running in the desert, um, 
the desert does not hold heat. As soon as the sun goes down, uh, that heat like quickly is gone. Um, and so we have seen uh, instances of hypothermia in the desert. Um, it is like every year uh, we find runners who go out, they've had, you know, they've kind of endured the heat. And as soon as the sun goes down, that uh, sweat and that cool uh, water completely. Yeah, if you've been like, wet all day, it's gonna just, it's gonna, it's gonna cool it's gonna your body feel very freezing. quickly. Yeah. So grab a layer um, before you head out, before sunset, yeah. you know, if, if it's even even 3, 4 p.m. and you're heading out on a lap, you might want to just grab a light long sleeve. Um, if you have a headlamp, even, grab a layer as well. And even, exactly, and even have one in your drop bag, uh, just something that you can change into. After the sun goes down, change your shirt, definitely. Yep. Um, ice plan, we do, like, because, it, you know, we're, we're in the desert. Uh, last year, uh, we had unlimited ice. It's the same this year. Um, we want you guys be, to be able to stay cool, um, cool your drinks, cool your bodies, cool, you know, stuff ice in your, uh, in your arm sleeves, in your neckerchief, in your hat, whatever it is, to kind of keep you guys cool. Yeah, don't be bashful with don't the ice. Don't be bashful with Take the ice. We have need. plenty and plenty of ice. We have almost 20,000 pounds of ice um, on hand and ready uh, to help you guys out there. So, um, and it will be available at every single aid station. We're gonna go over some race rules now that yep. apply to everyone. Uh, the first one, I know that everyone is uh, likes to film these days. No drones allowed in the park. Um, we are only allowed to fly a drone at in one place, and that's only me essentially. That's per our permit. Part even even though we have this race and everything, we are only allowed to fly it at at headquarters, and no one else is permitted to fly a drone. They're not normally allowed in the regional parks, so. Please leave your drones at home. Um, if you have a video and you want a little bit of footage, contact me uh, and I can share maybe one of the start area with you, but that's about all I'm gonna be able to capture, mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately. And any, yeah, any runner that is flying a drone or their crew is flying a drone, uh, you will be subject to disqualification. So please don't do that to yourself. Littering is strictly pro prohibited. Uh, we are very, very lucky to be able to use these parks. Um, and so we wanna continue to use them um, and, and run. So this is including any kind of organic waste, banana peels, orange slice peels, whatever it is. Um, we ask that you wait, find a receptacle at any of the aid stations. There are plenty there um, and dispose of your waste there. This also includes, again, reiterating, TP, toilet paper, anything, um, please pack it out and uh, use that leave no trace um, practice. Uh, if, if you are caught uh, throwing things on the ground and littering, it is also subject to disqualification. Uh, no pets are allowed at Havelina headquarters. So within the lot that headquarters exists, including camping areas, everything, uh, no pets are allowed. That includes dogs. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, with the atmosphere of the event, to have a safe event for everyone. Um, we all love our dogs, but we ask that you find somewhere in Fountain Hills maybe to board them up for, for the weekend. Unfortunately, we just cannot accommodate them in that area with that many people. Right. Um, no glass bottles are allowed uh, within headquarters or anywhere within the race. Uh, we understand everybody, you know, if kind of BYOB or whatever it is, uh, crews bringing anything but we ask you that uh, bring cans bring cans <laughs> bring cans bring plastic bottles no glass bottles please uh this is a closed course so you must follow the course as marked and in the direction of the race that you're supposed to go so uh, please pay attention and keep your lap straight cool uh runners please be respectful of all volunteers and race staff um we we have tons and tons of volunteers out there. They're working hard for you. They want to make sure that you're attaining your goal. Um, so just please be respectful um, of everyone that is um, out there. We do enforce our cutoffs based on gun time. So that would be 6 or 6, 10 a.m., wave 1 and 2 for the 100 mile, and 7 a.m. for the 100K. So uh, just keep that in mind. We're not you know, calculating your individual chip time for the cutoffs. If, if you don't arrive back to the finish line by noon or 12:10, depending on your wave on sunday uh, you will not be listed as a finisher buckle awards are based on chip time uh, this is not uh 
the gun time when the race starts it is your personal chip time so when you cross the mat at the very beginning um, and you are uh, looking for that 24 hour uh, finish um, it is based on your chip time okay trekking poles are not allowed uh, except under special circumstances so if you have if you would like to use trekking poles please contact jubilee she will be the ultimate judge and jury on that one mm -hmm. um, music and headphones we are uh, allowing music and headphones to be used along the track um, whatever kind of gets you through your race uh, we do ask that you keep one ear available so you can hear um, upcoming traffic uh, behind you okay um for pacers we ask that they just be a runner on foot you cannot run with a pet uh, or a dog out on course, yes. and your pacer cannot also cannot be on a bicycle, so you, they must be on foot. Um, and just kind of a, a note about Havelina in general, this race is rated R. Uh, we encourage um, a little bit of debauchery and fun costumes. Um, we have a best ass award, um, but we please ask no frontal nudity <laughs> at the race. Um, and uh, just for crews and family, uh, just please understand that there is some partial nudity uh, with the bearing of butts at Havelina. Um, we kind of went through a little bit of what to expect at the Jackass Night Trail, um, but I do also kind of want to touch that uh, there is no uh, top awards for the Jackass Night Trails, but there are individualized, um, personalized, uh, disco ball awards. Um, so you get a disco trophy at the end of your, and whatever is printed on your bib will also be printed on your award. Um, if you did not choose a name to put on your bib, I chose one for you, and it is also on your award. So, surprise. Um, let's go over crewing. Crewing and pacers and all the fun things. Crewing is only allowed at headquarters. Um, this is a very accessible loop. You guys get to see your crew every 20 miles. Um, and we make it fun where you guys get to have your crews right there on course within the headquarters. We have about a quarter mile uh, kind of track within headquarters that your crew um, can set up pop-ups along the way, um, very easily accessible. And then we basically have like a built-in uh, kind of spectator area um, by doing that. If you do have any sort of film or media coverage that you mm -hmm. are requiring, please contact us in advance if you would like maybe someone who's filming for you to go out on course. We do have media passes available. You just need to let us know in advance and get clued in on where you can and cannot go. Yep. Um, Pop-up crew zone. Uh, we've actually ex expanded it again this year. Um, every year it's kind of gotten bigger and bigger and we love to see that. Um, so we ask that these uh, kind of crew tents are your standard 10 by 10 pop-ups. Um, that means we do not want to see any kind of um, tent, uh, camping tents out there um, in lieu of the, the pop-ups. If you have a camping tent, you need to purchase a camping pass. That's Correct. what we ask. Yep. Um, aid station, again, just uh, aid station is accessible to runners only. Um, if you, we do have a crew station right next to the aid station um, so as your runner is coming in if they're getting close then you'll be able to wait there for your runner um, to be able to get them uh, whatever they need uh, drop bags will be there as well um, and then in the case that you know you need to go and fill your your uh, runner's water bottle then you can do that um, we just ask that you don't take uh, food and water and things like that for yourself uh, drop bags. So you can have you can have drop bags at JQ at headquarters and also at Jackass Junction. There will be a there's about three large permanent awnings near the headquarters staging area. That is the location for all of our drop bags for the main area, and they will be chalked out lane lines where you can put your bags within and there's plenty of room there. I know we didn't fill it last year, so there's yep. plenty of room. There'll also be an area where you can go over and sit down with your bag uh, under the shade there with picnic tables. Yep. Um, the course actually splits right around that, so if you don't have a drop bag in there, you don't need to go there. Let's say you have all your stuff with your crew, you can just bypass that whole drop bag zone. If you need to go and get your drop bag, you can go right under there as well. Mm -hmm. uh, all remote drop bags, there will be a designated area for remotes. You can drop your bag off the night before right by that sign that says remote drop bags 
or in the morning right into the bed of the truck. But not at the expo. Please don't bring them to Do the expo. Do not bring them to the expo. We need them at headquarters only. Yep. Um, yeah. For remote drop bags, we should mention that we will have a large cardboard bin that is for finished drop bags. So if you're yes. coming through Jackass Junction on your last lap, whether that be your third lap for your 100K or your fifth lap for your 100 mile, uh, take your bag and deposit it in that bin. Every time a vehicle leaves Jackass, it will bring all of the bags in those bins back to that spot at headquarters. So if you wanna guarantee that your bag gets back, probably by the close to the time you finish, it'll probably be within a few hours of your finish, put it in that bin. Otherwise, we can't guarantee it until 10 a.m. Sunday. Right. Um, cool. Pacers. Pacers. Let's go over Pacers. Pacers this year, a little bit different. Um, pacers are required to have bibs. Um, so if you know your Pacers, uh, you can pick these up at the Expo. Um, if your pace, if you have friends or crew or whoever that's going to jump on and be a pacer, these are available at the Air Viper store at headquarters um, on race day. Uh, we just ask that every single pacer um, sign a waiver and pick up a pacer bib. So if you have someone who's pacing you, um, they just need a bib this year to be on course. Pacers are allowed in the 100 <coughs> mile after three loops or at sunset, whichever's first. Mm -hmm. uh, so if it's this is kind of a bit of a gray area but essentially if you're if you're a faster runner after loop three if you're more of a mid-pack runner it's probably going to be after two laps so if it's four in the afternoon it's going to be dark on that lap you're welcome to, to have a pacer start with you and um, what about the 100k is it after two laps after two laps or again af um, at sunset okay um for pacers there's no, no muling, muling and no aid so yeah. No aid to give your runner. So Correct. Um, you can't carry things for your runner. You cannot give mm -hmm. them anything that you have. Runners must be self-supported in between aid stations. If you get to an aid station, you can definitely help fill bottles for your runner. Feel free, but you can't run ahead to do it without, with, out of sight of your runner. Right, so we say within sight of the aid station. Um, for those uh, dropping, um, we don't. ask, don't drop. <laughs> you can do it. We believe in you. Um, but if you have to drop, uh, we understand, but please, we ask that you do it at an aid station only. Um, make it to that aid station, tell the ham operator, tell the aid station captain, whoever you need to notify. Um, it's best to locate our ham guys. Um, they uh, are operating the radio. They do communications for us. They will take your wristband, indicating that you have dropping from the race. Um, we ask that you just please do not leave the course without telling anyone. Um, Make sure if you drop, your wristband is cut at an aid station. Yeah. That's what we ask. Yeah. So don't just see your car down the road and like, oh, I'm just going to. And then, because we worry. And I just want to make sure that you're all right. So please don't leave without letting someone know. Um, last lap bracelets. These are very exciting. Um, when you get to your last lap, hooray. Exci that's a very exciting thing. Um, we indicate that with last lap bracelets. Uh, we do this every year. Um, just make sure that when you come in, just tell one of our volunteers at the finish line, they're ready for you. They're going to be there and excited and cheering for you, um, ready to give you your last lap bracelet and they'll put it on for you. Um, it just indicates um, that you are on your last lap and then when you come in to finish, we know exactly who's finishing um, and we're there waiting for you with a buckle. All right, your awards this year, uh, we have our 100 mile awards. So they get this bronze belt buckle and this is our sub 24 hour and it says sub 24 hours on it. And this is the 100K. And just a reminder note that you can only, you're only eligible for the buckle of the race that you start. Right. So if you start the 100 mile, you're eligible for these. If you start the 100K, you're eligible for that. You cannot drop down mid race. So if you're thinking, race morning it's just not going to be your day you can switch to the 100k just make sure that you tell us at timing mm -hmm. and that you start at 7 a.m right um awards we have um top one two and three uh men and women in both the 100 mile 100k there are no top awards for the jackass night trail because we encourage take your time enjoy the event don't come back in two hours you lose uh but top awards for 100 mile and 100K. Um, and then we have some fun awards as well. Um, 
because this is so close to Halloween and Dia de los Muertos, we ask you guys to dress up and um, the more elaborate your costume and the longer your cost you're in your costume during uh, your race, um, the better chance you have of winning best costume. Um, we also have oldest and youngest. Finisher. Finisher. Um, we have the first virgin, who is the first first of the first, basically. Um, first javelina. First javelina finisher. 100 mile. Yeah, in the 100 mile. Um, we have the Jerry K, um, kind of just a... Most memorable performance. Yeah, just kind of a character award. Um, best ass and dead last. So those are your awards. Um, just to kind of, again, this is a huge event, and we have tons of people working hard for you. Uh, most of them are volunteers. So when you leave your aid stations, please give a thanks and a, uh, a wave or whatever, a high five to your volunteers. Um, they love you, they want to see you finish, and they are there for you every step of the way. Um, so uh, please thank your volunteers um, in and out of the aid stations. Um, just really quick, again, we want to thank our sponsors, Hoka One, One um, Rabbit, Goo, Squirrels Nut Butter, uh, Run Steep Get High, and then our local sponsors, uh, we have Freak Brothers, Fountain Hills Water and Ice, and Tube Waistband will be out there as well. Okay. Okay. Anything else? We're going to go into questions. We're going to go into Q&A. Okay. So if you guys so, have questions, Yep. Yeah, please let's type do below. It. We're going to go through the live feed right now. So yeah. can pacers run part of a lap? Example, run out with a runner and only part way and turn around, or run out in reverse to meet the runner on the way in? Or do they have to leave with the runner at JQ? They have to leave, at, they have to leave with your runner at headquarters and be able to run the full lap. Pacers can use aid stations, correct? Pacers can use aid stations. Can I use a sun shelter to crew? I believe that is fine. What is a sun shelter? I don't know what the difference is. It's, I mean, if it's... If it's an open, walled, shade-type structure, then yes. Then yes. If it's an enclosed tent with a zipper, then, then you no. need to have a uh, camping pass. Will we be okay... I don't know what this means. You think we will be okay with a came back and the aid stations alone? A oh, camelback in the aid stations alone. Um, a camelback oh. will probably have sufficient amount yeah. of capacity for, um, yes. Um, Your aid stations are no more than, uh, what I think six and a half is the longest stretch that you're gonna encounter. Is there a size limitation for drop bags? Can an individual have more than one bag? Uh, drop bags, we ask that there is one drop bag to Jackass and one drop bag at headquarters. We do ask that it's um, a reasonable size going out to your remote. We don't want to haul suitcases out to Jackass. Um, at headquarters, that's on you if you guys want a larger uh, drop bag at, yeah, we, at headquarters, that's totally yeah, fine. It can be large. It can be even a cooler if you want. Yeah. Um, as long as you can get it and you place it yourself where you want it there. Yep. Um, for the remote ones, we do line them up by bib number at Jackass Junction. Yep. Our last... Oh, Last lap bracelets for 100 miles only. Are you doing it for 100K this year? 100K as well. Okay. Uh, let's see. Hayden Hawks helped me to make ramen and cheese quesadillas last year at Coyote. Is the Hoka team going to be there this year? We will have um, uh, some of the Hoka team out at uh, Coyote. We are possibly hearing back for Magda uh, Belay coming out. And then um, Tim Tollison will be out there as well. Can the Pacers get their Pacer bibs and sign the waiver at headquarters after the race starts? Um, yes. I have a tent site and so does my friend. Can we get them next to each other? Um, the tent site and crew sites and all that is first come, first serve. So arrive together. Arrive and, together and or, grab, yeah. grab a place together. Yep, exactly. Totally. Instead of a JQ drop bag, can I just go to my camping tent? Sure. Yeah, you, you don't have to put your stuff over yeah. there. That's usually for people with no campsite, or if you want it to be more conveniently located, you can definitely put whatever you want over yeah, there. Yeah, the drop bags are like right located right off the track. Um, the campsites are a little bit more of a walk, but if you uh, feel that you wanna kind of hold all your stuff there, it's totally fine. Are there porta potties at the aid stations? All, of, all the aid stations will have porta johns. If we finish the 100K before the party at Jackass Junction, can we run out there for the party? Who's finishing before the party? 
<laughs> Why would you do that? I would say no. No. Once you, uh, Once you finish, you're it, done. Th- that's really just for runners uh, that are currently that are in on the race. Course. We ask that we ask that cr- yeah, crews are not allowed out there. Spectators are not allowed out there. Uh, only pacers with pacer bibs pacing your runner and runners. So if you want to be out there, sign it, I guess sign up for Jackass Night Trail or yeah. Yeah. Uh, are parking passes cash only? Um, in the case, so if you are a runner, um, your parking pass is included with your entry. So you will receive these either at the expo or at the main gate, whichever one you go to first. Um, but these are good for the two days that you're going to be there. If you forget these, the main gate may ask you to pay, and it is $7. Um, it's not cash only, but uh, we ask that just make sure that you remember this. Will hoodies be available to purchase at headquarters? Yes. Unless they sell out at the expo. Yeah. I, again, with all the merch, I would say Go to the try expo. and get to the expo. Totally. I think some of it will likely sell out. Yeah. Will there be a shuttle to and from the parking area for crews? No. Yeah, you have to walk from the competitive track over to headquarters. It's a short walk. It's about, it could be a quarter mile minimum to a half mile at the longest, depending on where you park. Yeah. What vegetarian options will there be? Oh, there's a lot of that. Um, there's vegan options. There's there's a lot of vegetarian options. Yeah. Uh, I know we have some dairy-free cheese. We have uh, potato soup that will not have anything in it. We have at all aid stations, there is vegan broth as well as the normal chicken broth. So just when in doubt, ask. We also have some gluten-free options as well. So yeah. if you have specific dietary, just ask. Uh, we do have that available. Whether it be PACER volunteers. Um, every year there are some PACER volunteers, but we can't guarantee uh, a volunteer will be available. So in the case that you need um, a PACER, uh, on our website there is a PACER sign up um, if you need a PACER, or you can actually um, reach out to our community uh, via this uh, Facebook page um, saying, hey, I'm a there's runner, actually, I'm looking for a There's PACER. actually a group, the Have yeah. 100 group. That's where I would recommend posting it, not to this page, but to the associated group. Yeah. Can we change from 100K to 100 miles, or can we only move down? No, you can move up if you want to, for sure. Yep, you can just pay the difference either Mm -hmm. at the expo or race morning, but do it at the expo, if possible. Is it okay to finish the 100K, then become a pacer for a fellow runner if we still have legs? If you have legs, do it. More power to you. Great. When arriving at headquarters on Friday, can I bring my car over to drop off all my gear, or do I have to lug the stuff over? No, bring bring your stuff, drop it off, and then go park and then you can come back and set up. What time can we set up our cruise station on Friday? Starting at 7 a.m. I saw that there is a 10 time finishers jacket. Have any of those been given out? Um, We've had a couple of 10 time finisher jackets, yes. Um, Susan Donnelly? Yeah. I think Katra is this year? I believe, yeah, Katra as well, yeah. Is there a jacket Um, for 10 or just five? No, for 10 as well, yeah. I will be arriving late Friday night and picking up race materials the morning of the race. Will I have any trouble parking as I arrive um, before I receive my parking pass? They're arriving arriving late Friday night. Um, There There will be an attendant all night. There will be an attendant there um, at night, not at the main gate, not by the park gate, but by our, we have a security tent um, right as you enter headquarters. So will our our Um, expo passes go there? So expo passes will then go, or the uh, parking passes will go there um, as long as, uh, yeah, as long as there's somebody there, you should be able to pick up a pass. Can they buy hoodies online and pick it up at the expo? Um, I think you have until tonight. Tonight at midnight. Tonight there, at midnight, we close registration. There should be a link on the website. It might be the link to the camping passes. If you go to the camping page, click on that link. It's on Ultra Sign Up. Mm-hmm. You can order hoodies still until midnight, and that should guarantee your size. Yep. Yep, Katra is on here, and she says she's going for 10. Swing. Very cool. Um, I know that we had some questions from the other day when we made a post. I'm going to go through those. Um, really quickly. Just bear with me for one second. I'm going to pull up those questions. Are there comments on there that have not been read? There might have been, but I was only I could only load so many. It looked like, but I might bring you guys. Closer. Uh, I would leave it. Okay. I got most of them, I think. Um, 
Will Hoppy Javelina IPA be available to purchase in six packs at the expo? Um, not in six packs, no. Just individually? Um, just individually. At the expo, um, it's a draft pull. Um, at the headquarters, at the beer gardens, there'll be cans. Um, if you're interested in purchasing multiple, um, I would check out Huss in town um, at either one of their, their uh, tap rooms. Yeah, and it's already tapped. So you guys, yeah. if you arrive into town early and you want to go give it a try, you can go to either location of Huss. Uh, I will make a quick note too, Freak Brothers Pizza, if you want to check them out before race day, they do have a location now in downtown Phoenix near Roosevelt Row. Just Google it. Uh, I know poles aren't allowed, but if I see a walking stick on the ground, may I use it for a little while? Should I, should it strike my fancy? Sure. I don't know that you'll find very many good sticks There's out there. There's not a lot of like walking sticks in the desert, yeah. honestly. Yeah. So um, if you really are dead set on poles, ask Jubilee. Just, I, I will be at the at headquarters all day long for the duration of this entire race. If you guys are struggling, if you feel that you really uh, you need a pole to lean on for the last lap or something like that, then please come and ask Can me. Can our tent we rented in the camping area be our aid station, or must we put a pop-up up in the designated area? Um, you don't have to put up a pop-up. But if you are using that as a crew, like your crew area, uh, it needs to be a pop-up and not a uh, tent. Yeah, but your crew not... can use your rented tent yeah. to, to hang out in. You can use that as your aid station, whatever you want to do. That's fine. Uh, I did see another question somewhere. How far are the rented camping tents from the start-finish area? Well, from the course, it's within some are within literally 10 feet yeah. up to the most is probably 100 yards depends on where you want to go yeah and there is a site map on our website you can literally see where they were uh, located last year uh, how yeah that was the question how close far are the rented tents uh, we just answered that one will there be a good supply of ice at the aid stations last year was great yep. and much appreciated will that amount be repeated for this year yes Where's the closest place? Some of these I'm just reiterating. Okay. What's up, guys? Where is the closest place to pay for a shower post race at a rec center or similar? So there are showers available there at the um, at the park. Um, again, at the competitive lot or at Pemberton Trailhead. Um, neither one of those are paid uh, shower facilities. Um, yeah. You guys have a question? I mean, their stuff is right there. Oh, you can come get it. Yeah. <laughs> this is live, but we're also literally, it's a live operation. Yeah, for, uh, so we're actually, we're packing our trucks, getting ready to go out to the site and set up tomorrow. Um, so we have our crew and staff and everybody still here. We're rocking and rolling. Thank you. I guess we can pull it in now that we've answered everything else. So we're just going to pull this in real quick, guys, and make sure we got to all your stuff. Um, but we're probably going to try and cap this at one hour if we can. See so, ya. Yeah. There, there we go. Okay, Better so. Plan. Is the expo located near headquarters? Um, so it is about a 15 to 20 minute drive. It's probably more like um, 20. And it's also not at the host hotel, just not, so you know. No. So it's at La Puesta del Sol, um, it's at Fort McDowell Adventures, um, and we will post uh, tomorrow, you guys will receive your runner email, um, in addition to this live feed, in addition to uh, your runner uh, guide, um, it'll have addresses and all that thing um, in your runner email as well. Cost and of bags of ice and size at headquarters, cash only? Not cash only, we, t we accept credit card, um, I do not know the cost, I can't remember what we did last year. Okay, that's to be determined. Um, hope it'll be, I think, reasonable. Yeah. Uh, and I think, is it 10 pound bags for the ones for purchase? Bags. Yep. Mm -hmm. How late is music playing on race day? I will probably crash and sleep, but will music be pumping through all of the 100 mile finishers? Yes. And also, just to note, we will have light towers and everything. Like, it'll be all lit up. The party will be going all night, just so you know. Night before the race, it will be quiet. Quiet hours start at 8. Regarding goos, will caffeinated and non-caff be available? I believe so, yeah. I would say there's a limited number of goos, so if you still have needs, be sure to pack, but there will be some out yeah. there. Uh, when should we bring drop bags, expo, or race day? Um, so don't bring them to the expo, uh, but if you are going to headquarters on Friday, you can go ahead and drop them off on Friday in the designated areas. Um, and then race morning, they need to be there by 5.45 a.m. Is the satellite image on the, on the website of JQ accurate for this year? 
it is a little bit different. They've yeah, actually made some yeah. changes to the lot. They've deleted some of the islands that were out there. So we'll have actually a little bit more space than before. Mm -hmm. And we are changing up a little bit of the layout. I believe the updated map is up on the website. You can see where the vendors will be. Uh, we're trying to concentrate everything for vendors over towards the main area this year. Uh, they also took out the existing fire pit. So that will all now be crew and spectator area. That has all been moved and we'll have other fire pits uh, closer to the start finish area. Yep. Where can you buy hoodies again? Uh, you can buy them at the expo or at uh, the headquarters. We'll have a big Aravipa store um, with those available if they're not sold out. Regarding bib number placement, is it okay to minimize the size of the bib in order to place the number on the hip of the shorts as yeah. long as the chip isn't bent? As long as you don't bend these uh, chips in the back and you don't crease those, um, you can fold around it and bend around it as you need to. I have a vehicle camping pa permit but won't arrive until Saturday early a.m. Can I get the car into the race site instead of the spectator parking? I would say if you're if you arrive before 4 a.m. Mm -hmm. that it will be possible but at a certain point we're gonna be pushing all cars to park in the competitive so yeah. if you can get there really early we will like we said we will have an attendant at the headquarters main lot all night so if you have a late flight and you're driving in at, say, midnight, you will be able to still come up there and park. I still don't have a bib number listed on Ultra Sign Up. Any specific reason? Yes. So, Probably if you signed up in the last week, we had to assign and get the bibs printed a couple, like a week and a half ago. So that's probably why you won't have an assigned bib yet. Yeah. So as soon as registration closes, then you'll be able to see your bib number this week so probably yeah tomorrow or tuesday the the rest of the bibs will be assigned and listed yeah let's see if there were any more will there be any vegan options for purchase for crew on race day and friday yes freak brothers pizza does have a, f a fully veganized menu so there will be vegan pizza available for purchase is there cell phone reception throughout the course? Majority of the places. There Most is, of the course there yeah. is. Just keep in mind with so many people out there, there will be a strain on the cell towers uh, at certain points of the day, so we can't guarantee it. But for the most part, yes. What is the electrolyte beverage on course? Um, so we have Gatorade, and then we also have Goo Brew uh, provided by Goo this year. We also have electrolyte like salt tablets. Is the bib number on Ultra Sign Up only? At the moment, yes. Yes. Okay. Um, we are just over an hour. I think we're going to wrap things up, guys. Uh, anything else to add? No. All just right. We are. Yeah. Year, we're, excited we're excited to, to see everyone out there. Thank you guys again for joining us at the 2018 Havilland 100. Uh, we hope you guys all get your Western States qualifiers. We hope you guys all have a great time. And if there's anything that either of us can do, yeah. or if you see this race briefing later, um, please either email us or comment below. We'll try and get to any more of the questions and uh, we'll see you shortly. Awesome. Bye. Thanks guys.